So we're getting kind of close to the end of hatching season here at Snake Discovery. What we have left in the incubator are two clutches of rat corn eggs. Some of their babies will be scaleless. We also have two leopard gecko eggs that a friend gave us to incubate since she wasn't able to keep them herself. And we also have several false Cuban false chameleon eggs in the incubator. And it turns out everything has decided to hatch today. We're going to save the rat corn babies for a separate video altogether because today we're going to focus on the lizards that are hatching right now. As you can see, she's making herself quite obvious. You just want to crawl on my hand? All right, cool. This is the mother, or we believe this one is the mother to the babies that are hatching right now. This is our Cuban false chameleon female. She is awesome. I love these critters. They're so docile. We actually held back one of her babies from last year just to kind of raise up a little bit. And he's currently sitting on Ed's hand, so I'm gonna grab Whoa. him. We thought it was a female at first, but we must have missed the scales on the tail originally because this is a this is a male. So he's he's growing. He's looking great. He's starting to get that head that is like disproportionately large for his body. We thought he was kind of small for a yearling until we saw today's baby right here. Look at this little cutie. Oh, this one literally just hatched, guys. Oh, you're so squirmy. Oh my gosh. You are so stinking cute. Look at that size difference. Don't go towards so, your brother. I know, your brother has an <laughs> attitude, so I'm just gonna pick you up here. Look at that! Oh, this guy is just a couple hours old. He fits on my finger. Oh, what a cutie. He's so cute. He even got like baby eyes. Yeah. He had a little bit of vermiculite stuck in his eyes, so we had to get all that out. He's like all tuckered out from hatching. <laughs> I love how he squiggles. He was uh, hatched or incubated in this little container with uh, his, uh, cl not clutch mate, because they're anoles. They lay, lay only one egg at a time. But both of these eggs were laid on the same day, incubated on the same day. For anybody who is attempting to breed these guys and is curious, because I know the toughest part with them is hatching the eggs. Getting the eggs is no problem. We incubated his egg at 80 degrees in vermiculite, in case that helps at all. It took him about... Oh shoot, almost three months. Wow. It was just shy of three months actually, because it's September 16th. So in case that helps, that's how we hatch this little cutie. But look at this, his head is like a normal size for his body, don't you think? Yeah. He hasn't grown, like overgrown his head yet. I think that Unlike comes- this guy. Yeah, this guy at a year old definitely has that uh, noticeably large head to him. He is so cool. So I think first we have to sex this little guy and see if it is a male or a female. Sexing isn't too difficult, like now that we kind of have the hang of it, it isn't too difficult as long as you know what to look for. You are basically looking for a pair of enlarged scales at the base of their tail. If they have them, they're males. If they don't, they're females. Do you want me to get dad? Oh sure, that's a good idea. For example, this is the dad. He uh, is really calm too. Check out the base of his tail. Right here are those two enlarged scales that we're looking for. You're such a good dad, I'm sorry. We just totally looked at you uh, down there and you didn't even mind. So let's sex this little baby. For this, we're gonna use a little tool called a loop. And basically it's just a little magnifying glass. In case you're interested in getting one of these of your own, they do come in handy. I'll put a link to them in the description below. I got it back in college for tree identification and it's really come in handy for uh, sexing these Might false be able to do chameleons. Glass. Oh yeah, that's much easier. So I think this guy, oh, I see the scales. That's a boy. That's a boy, definitely a boy. Cool little boy hatched, aww. Okay, we're gonna set this little guy up in a small enclosure at first. Paper towel. We're going to mist this so it stays nice and humid. So we're actually gonna stick him back in the incubator room for a couple of days just so he can kind of get moving around and just kind of start him off right. Since they are arboreal, he will need a couple of branches to climb on. A bigger one, a smaller one, and we're gonna throw this thin one in there too. Then he has choices on where he wants to perch. Just like with birds, you wanna give them different diameters of their perches to keep their feet healthy and exercised. We want him to have different diameters to actually sit on. Oh, first perch. Oh, he's got it already. Oh, a little wobbly. Oh, that's so cute. Oh my gosh. He'll of course need a little water dish. I don't know if he's actually gonna use it, but it'll be there in case he wants it. And we're gonna keep it just like this. Very simple as a baby setup. He has perches, he has water, the humidity will be high, 
and we're going to set them in the incubator room for a few days before we set them up uh, just like we do the adults, just a much smaller version. Even though this is called the false chameleon, it's not a true type of chameleon, hence the false part of its name. They are a species of anole, so instead of having a tongue that will project out to catch its food like a true chameleon would, these little guys are just going to run around and actually catch their food with their mouth. His first meal will probably be five to seven days from now once he's done absorbing the rest of his yolk internally. And he is so little, he's gonna have to have things like maybe hidey eye fruit flies or pinhead crickets or actually our babies in the past have eaten newborn dubia roaches, so we'll probably just feed him those. But we'll give him a variety and see what he likes. So what we're gonna do now is since he was incubated at the same time as another egg, this one theoretically should be ready to go as well. We're gonna open it up just to see if there is a baby on the inside, because what we've found is these false chameleons. I mean, there's not a ton of information on breeding them, and we're trying to figure out the best way to hatch the eggs. And what we found is these eggs will get really close to hatching, and then the babies will just die and not come out. So we don't know if there's a humidity thing going on or what, but I'm going to take a little razor blade, just open it up, and see if they're just having a tough time getting out uh, and I'm also curious on if there's a baby on the inside so let's see this is the one that hatched we're just gonna move that out of the way I'm gonna take this one and it might just be a bad egg I mean these guys are really hard to hatch so let's see cut a little opening and just see if there's a baby or not in here Hmm, I don't think there's a baby in that one. Oh, I see something, I think, gray further down. Yeah, that might just be the yolk. So we're just going to leave him alone for a few days. There is an opening here now if he was ready to come out. We'll stick him back in the incubator and we'll give you an update in a few days. We're also going to open one more false chameleon egg today because this egg was laid back on May 11th, which is like a month and a half earlier than when his egg was laid, but it still looks good. It has expanded, and usually that means, well, in our experience, usually when it expands and doesn't hatch for a while, the baby just eventually dies and the egg starts to mold away. So we're wondering if you just have to cut it open when it's still expanded and looks good instead of leaving it alone. So again, we're not really sure since there's not a lot of people who breed these uh, animals and as you can see these two eggs have molded and gone bad they went through the expansion phase and then they deflated and molded so i'm hoping to catch this at this phase before it goes bad and maybe there's still a viable baby on the inside let's find out oh <gasps> whoa oh it got yeah. you in the eye <gasps> Face. I'm sorry. I got the camera. Oh no, it's all over the. <sighs> Lovely. All right, well. Okay, we're gonna clean this up first because you can't see anything. Uh, the camera's dripping. Ew. That's gross. Quickly. <laughs> get the egg goop off the lens. Ew. Is your face okay? Yeah. I guess that's what happens when they expand. Yeah, there's just a lot of pressure in there. Weird. Mm, oh, that is weird. Oh, I see scales down there. Huh. Hmm. Let me go a little further. I do not see... Any movement? Movement. No. no. Let's let them sit for a few more days. We'll just have to keep it really moist in there. Yep. All right. That was interesting. Yeah. Okay. So we have two eggs that I think have babies in them. I don't know if they're alive or not. That was really strange. Again, these are hard to breed, so we're learning more from each egg experience, I guess. But that leaves us with these little leopard geckos that also decided to hatch today. One of them did anyway, and since geckos lay their eggs in pairs at the same time, both of these eggs are ready to go. Take a look. <laughs> so I don't know anything about their genetics. Oh, hi, hi. Oh, that's right, sometimes geckos just hatch right in front of you once they're like disturbed. I'm sorry, are you gonna come out? When they come out, I might be asking other leopard gecko breeders what they kind of look like. We're really just gonna find them homes though. And uh, we've never hatched leopard geckos before. We always do fat-tailed geckos. We're not gonna cut this one open yet though, cause this one literally just pipped. So we don't want to like rush things. And usually leopard geckos, as far as I'm aware, they have no problems hatching on their own. So I'm thinking by tomorrow, this guy should also at least have his head out and this guy should be completely out. Can't wait to see what they look like. So we're gonna give these guys a day and check back on them along with the false community million eggs that haven't hatched yet. We'll just check back on them all tomorrow and give you an update. Okay, I have bad news, bad news, and some good news. The bad news is the false chameleon eggs that were not hatching didn't hatch. They just must have died in the shell, unfortunately. 
but that happens sometimes. Good news about false chameleons is that this little baby is doing great. Oh, you're so little. He's actually a pretty good eater too. I just kind of have to spray him with a little bit of water and then he opens his mouth and then you sneak food. You just bit my finger. You little twerp. Don't touch me. Can you hand me tweezers? I'll see if can, I can get him to eat. Okay, ready? Eat it. Nice. Here you go. It's like the best way to get these babies to eat is just kind of upset them slightly until they open their mouth at you and then sneak food in and they eat it. Good job, dude. Is that a good doobie roach? Yeah, he ate it. Here, you want to nice. feed him another? Good job, little dude. Yeah. Tasty cockroach. Do you want one more? Oh, hand's so shaky. Yeah, it would be a terrible surgeon. Go on. Oh, he went for that yeah, one. Yeah, he did. Wow. You're eating a lot more willingly than the other one we had. Yeah, our other one was a pain. Yeah, it took him forever to be tongue trained. So this guy is already claimed. I'm sorry if anybody wants him. He does have a home already lined up. So good news number one is that he's doing very well. I'll just kind of set him aside. And we have more false chameleon eggs, which is also good. Um, I think though a couple of them I meant to take out. Uh, yeah, that one is bad. That one's bad. Okay, so I have to toss a couple of them, but look at these nice white ones. And that one's nice and big, so there's still hope for more babies this season. The other bad news is with the leopard geckos. So the first one that had his head out, um, unfortunately has a really kinked tail and he's really tiny. Hey buddy. You're really cute and little. I don't know his genetics and I don't know his morph. I'm not familiar with leopard gecko morphs, so if anybody here does know what he might be, let me know. He does seem to have some issues though. Uh, he's He just had his first shed, which he actually didn't get the shed off on his own. I had to help him and literally take it all off for him after a bath. And the first shed geckos have, we think, stimulates their appetite for the rest of their life. That's why they eat their shed skin. So since I had to take the shed off, I don't know if he will have an appetite. We're gonna have to find out. And check out that kinked tail. This could be a result of moving the eggs during like mid-incubation. Sometimes that'll cause issues like that in lizards and snakes for that matter. But he does seem to have other issues too, so I honestly don't know if he's gonna make it. Hopefully he does. Whoa, you're super fast. Yeah, you sure can run. The good news with the leopard gecko babies is that the other egg hatched and he looks amazing. Oh, don't look into me. He's like twice the size of the first one and check out those colors. He's really pretty and a nice, beautiful tail. Hi, cutie. He also just had his first shed today and he got it all off on his own. He ate it. And so I'm going to offer him food for the first time here soon. Just little dubia roaches is what they eat. Oh, he's huge in comparison. Yeah, he is much bigger than that other one. Check out those colors and that pattern. Here, check out these two litter mates. I had to split them up like right after they hatched because he was actually attacking that one. I don't know if that, like he knew that that one is genetically weaker or what, but uh, and, you know, survival of the fittest. But we separated them and all is good now. If anyone watching breeds leopard geckos, can you let me know what morph he might be? I mean, I know with leopard geckos, it's like impossible to tell if you don't know what the parents are, which we don't. We were just literally given eggs. You just tried to bite me there. Ha, ah, you're so sassy. So at least we have some good news for you. This one's doing really well, and the baby over there, wherever he is, in there somewhere, he's doing really well. And yeah, sometimes it just happens that eggs don't hatch or babies come out, you know, they have issues sometimes. It's all part of breeding reptiles. Not all of them are going to be perfect. Ed's gonna try to feed this guy. So a trick with roaches is to blow on them so they move around a little bit more since they don't move like crickets. But sometimes the animal you're trying to feed also moves when you mm -hmm. do that. Hopefully so he still tasty. has an appetite even though I had to shed him. Come on, doesn't that taste good? You're licking it. Oh, oh, I think- I struck at it. Did you just bite that to bite it? Is it, is it moving around? Will you eat it? Oh, oh! Get it! Get it! Come on, dude! You can do it! Eat your first bug! Is it actually food? Yeah, can I- Oh, oh he you tried! Missed. Oh, you missed on. again! Come on! Missed the third- Oh, yeah. you got it! <laughs> you got it! Aw! Alright, well now we know. He does have his appetite. Whoa. Hell, is it raining? Um, we're having a storm. Soon. Sooner than I thought. Ed's supposed to be grilling steaks right now. Uh, Whoa. The grill is on. <laughs> the alarms are going off. Steaks. Have fun cooking steaks. I'll oh, keep yeah. filming inside where it's okay. dry. Yeah, have fun with that. I will. Don't die. Don't get struck by lightning. Okay. 
Well, that was interesting. Yay! I'm so excited that he had his first meal. Oh, and now he's licking his eyeballs for us. He might still be special needs because it does seem like he has neurological issues. But, I mean, he ate just fine, so he might be okay otherwise. So I would like to know, with his tail being like that, if it broke right here, hmm. would it come back straight or not? Oh, that's a really good question. I don't know. Let us know in the comments if you think its tail would grow back straight or crooked again. We don't know. We can't give you an answer because we won't know. Well, Ed's going to continue trying to feed the second one, who has no interest at all in that roach. Yeah, I might give up on him. You want <laughs> it? Thank you, everybody, for watching today's little lizard hatching video. I know it's a little different than usual since, you know, we're, we breed snakes mostly, but this was kind of a fun change of pace. Thank you to all of our Patreon supporters for backing this channel. We appreciate everything you contribute. Thank you to everyone who's watching today, and we'll see you all next time. Can you, want you another eat one? one more for the camera before we end this video? Say, no, I don't want to. You know you want it. Oh, we're thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> Go away, I'm eating. Today, look at this out. Or look at this out? Check this out, look at this. Yeah. It kind of Okay, mom, go down there. I don't want you to fall. Okay. He's so, perfect. he's so clumsy. Bless you. Thank you. For this, we're gonna use a little, ugh, little cool pit. Uh, the camera's dripping. Ew. That's gross. Well, we put some in warmer, but they all went bad.